In this video, we're gonna look at the notion of a prime ideal and a maximal ideal. So let's just have our setup that R is a ring. An ideal P of R is called a prime ideal if whenever A times B is inside of P, then either A is in P or B is in P. And uh, the, maybe the way that you wanna think about this is like prime numbers. If whenever P divides A times B, then P divides A or P divides B. So this is some sort of like generalization of that notion of a prime number to rings. And then an ideal is called maximal if you have any other ideal that you try to fit between M and R. So notice we've got M is a subset of I, which is a subset of R. Then you get restricted down to the fact that I is equal to M or I is equal to R. So the way that you want to think about this is you cannot fit any other ideal between M and R. And if you try, well then you end up either back at M or at R. So there's nothing like strictly in between a maximal ideal and the entire ring. Okay, so the first result that we're gonna prove, which is really classic, says that if you have a commutative ring with one, then P is a prime ideal if and only if R mod P, that quotient ring, is an integral domain. So, let's do the proof. We will do the forward direction first. So let's go ahead and suppose that P is a prime ideal and we have some setup that could look like having zero divisors inside of R mod P. So in other words, we have A plus P um, times B plus P is equal to zero plus P. And now all of this is happening in the quotient ring R uh, mod P. So we want to show that this means that either A or B plus P is equal to zero. But now by the multiplication inside the quotient ring, this means that um, AB plus P is equal to um, the zero element from the quotient ring, zero plus P. But that's exactly as like saying um, A times B is in P, because that's what it means for those cosets to be the same. But since this is a prime ideal, that mean, means that A is in P or B is in P. But that means as cosets, A plus P equals zero plus P or B plus P equals zero plus P. Which now if we go up here and look at this line and this line down here, that's exactly the condition that R mod P is an integral domain. So we have our forward direction of this proof. I'll clean up the board and then we will do the reverse direction. Okay, now we're ready for the reverse direction of this proof. So let's go ahead and suppose that R mod P is an integral domain. And uh, A times B is in P. So in other words, what we want to get at, we want to show that either A is in P or B is in P. That's what it would take for P to be a prime ideal. But notice if A times B is in P, that means AB plus P is the same thing as the coset zero plus P happening inside of the quotient ring R by P. But this is the same thing as A plus P times B plus P equals zero plus P. But since um, R mod P is an integral domain, this means that either A plus P equals zero plus P or B plus P equals zero plus P. But that's exactly the same thing as saying that A is in P or B is in P, which is the condition that P is a prime ideal. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're going to prove a similar result for maximal ideals. 
Okay, so we just showed that if we have a prime ideal and we mod out by it, we get an integral domain. Now, a maximal ideal is like a prime ideal with some more structure. Um, and so we should be able to mod out by a maximal ideal and get something with more structure. So what has more structure than an integral domain? A field. That's exactly what we'll show. So if we've got a commutative ring with one, then M is a maximal ideal if and only if R mod M is a field. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the forward direction. Okay, good. So that means we want to suppose that M in R is a maximal ideal. Um, and let's take an element A uh, plus M from the quotient ring R mod M. And we want to assume that we have an element which is not zero inside of this quotient ring. So we can add that on by saying with A is not an element from M. So that means it's not equal to zero within the quotient ring. Now what we want to do is show that this thing is invertible. So uh, let's go ahead and consider this chain of ideals. So this first ideal is gonna be made up of zero plus M. So uh, notice that's just gonna be kind of M itself. And then that's going to be contained in the principal ideal generated by A plus M. And that's going to be contained in our quotient ring R mod M. And then by a homework problem, so again, I don't want to give this away because it's important to save things for homework problems. We know that all ideals of R mod M are of the following form. So that means that this ideal A plus M is equal to I mod uh, M where I lives in an important spot. I lives between M and R. Okay, good. Now notice that A is an element from I, which tells us that M is not equal to I, because notice M does not contain A, so that means I is strictly bigger than M, but if I is strictly bigger than M, what that tells us is that I has to be the entire ring, and that's because M is maximal. So we've got that I is the entire ring, but what that tells us is that A plus M, uh, that ideal, is equal to R mod M. Again, because we've replaced I with the entire ring, but that means this special element 1 plus M is an element of the ideal A plus M. Great. But that means that 1 plus M is a multiple of A, but that tells us that there exists some B in R where A plus M times B plus M equals 1 plus M. And that's uh, another way of saying that A plus M is a unit inside of this ring. So let's see what we did. We started with a non-zero element from the quotient ring. And then using the fact that this was a maximal ideal, we were able to construct an inverse for that non-zero element from the quotient ring and show that it was in fact a unit, which is exactly what we need to do in order to show that R mod M is a field. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we will do the other direction. Okay, so now we're ready to take the other direction. In other words, we will suppose that R mod M is a field. So R mod M is a field. And then from here, we want to take an, uh, an ideal of R um, that lies between M and R. And let's go ahead and uh, suppose that I is not equal to M. 
So, and if it's not equal to m, what we want to get at is that i is equal to r. Because in order for m to be maximal, we shouldn't be able to fit any ideals between um, m and r. So what we're doing, we're taking an ideal between m and r. We're assuming that it's not m, which means we need to show that it's equal to r. Okay, good. So what this tells us is that there exists an A in I with um, A is not an element from M. But notice that gives us the following. So notice now we have M is contained but not equal to uh, the principal ideal the ideal generated by A and M. So in other words, it is the ideal which contains M and everything else that is generated by A. But notice that's going to be a sub-ideal of I, which is uh, an ideal of R. Okay, good. But now, since A is not in M, the maximal ideal, that means A plus M is not equal to zero plus M in the quotient ring R mod M. But that means we can find some B in R with A plus M times B plus M equals one plus M. Because we know R mod M is a field, and so we find the inverse of A. Great. But what that tells us is that 1 plus m is inside of this ideal generated by a and m, which is a sub-ideal of i. Great. But then, by a previous result, if there's a unit in an ideal, then that ideal has to be the whole ring. So... Since uh, one is the identity, it's like really kind of um, the most important unit. What that tells you is that that ideal has to be the whole ring, which is exactly what we needed to show for M to be maximal. Great. And that uh, finishes this video.